My name's Dave McGowan. I'm, uh, I'm with Ravenswood Media, and we produce the uh, Battle for Bats Surviving White Nose Syndrome. So, so the Forest Service came to us and said, look, we want to do a film about White Nose Syndrome and about what's happening now. And, uh, well, that, that's good, and, and, uh, but there's, there's no one agency that does everything. So you have Fish and Wildlife, you have Forest Service, you have Bureau of Land Management, you have uh, private orgs like Bat Conservation International. I have to become something of a journalist and start making calls and talking to people and formulating some sort of strategy about where we're going to film for the given budget that we've been, you know, that we have. And what we came up with was a trip to Vermont with the epicenter of where this disease had like just completely wiped out bats. And then we went to uh, Southern Illinois where we were in the cave with the Forest Service team when they actually found the first evidence of white nose syndrome in Illinois. <clears throat> and then we went to Wisconsin where there is no white nose yet. And we looked at what their program was about how they're trying to engage the public and so forth. And we also went to Texas to Bracken Cave that has 15 million bats, free field, Mexican free field bats. They're in no danger of getting white nose, but it just shows the sort of volume that bats can do when they're roosting in, in a site. It's, it's the largest uh, mammal, aggregate of mammals on the face of the earth. Uh, plus Merlin Tuttle, Mr. Bat, is in that area. So uh, you, you go around and then you come back and you edit all that together and it's, you know, the editing is the sort of the, the, the iceberg under the water part of it and, uh, and yeah, that's how it happens. The movie was made because there's been a fungus that's been introduced into North America that's killed seven million bats. And it's, and it's just an ecological catastrophe, the worst wildlife catastrophe in the history of, of the United States. And uh, it's going to continue. But there's one little bits of hope is that um, there's some survivorship that's been exhibited in some of these caves that have been hit and there's a few bats that are able to survive the fungus. And if that's the case, then we've got to uh, build, a, make a plan for how we're going to protect those habitats where these bats live and encourage them to rebuild their population. And that's going to mean that we can't interfere with their bat roosts. Uh, people can put up bat houses in their backyards that's, that's like increasing habitat for the bats. The bats use those bat roosts in the summer to raise their young. They usually go under trees, but you know, we're cutting down all the trees, so it's good to have these bat houses. It's a good way for the public to get involved in a very, very serious wildlife issue.